Hey guys, how are we going? We're here today again with the Area 52 League Challenge. Um, as you might have seen in your notifications if you got them on, um, we're going to have a focus on seniors and juniors today. There's not that many masters and the seniors and juniors didn't get much of a run at the cup yesterday. So we're going to have a look at um, yeah, what, what they can provide us with for the first round. We have, give me one second, I just got to, as you guys might know, I'm pretty new to this streaming, as you uh, could tell yesterday, I reckon. So I just need to change the names on this, which I can do somehow. I don't even know how. Ah, there we go. We got it. So our first matchup is uh, Alex Griggs versus Luke Mason. Now, I know Luke is on the, the Pick-A-Rom train, but I have no idea what Alex is on. So it'll be interesting to watch this one. It's always interesting to see how these, these seniors and these juniors think about things. It tends to be a bit different in the decks tend to be quite interesting. It should be really fun to cast. <laughs> Wonderful, okay, so it looks like they're setting up now. So we might go to the stream. So as you'll see, we've got uh, Alex on the left and Luke on the right. Alex with that beautiful Kanto starter play mat. I love it. I might have to ask him where he got that one from after his game. It looks like both pairs are shuffled up and ready to go. Oh, looks like... Luke might be waiting for me to give him a start signal, so I'll send him one now. Hopefully they're ready. If you're getting any background noise, I apologize. We have um, some other sort of tournament on at the moment around the play area and around the stream room. Uh, the stream room's pretty soundproof. Uh, but especially with the other mic, as you might notice. Um, yeah, interesting decks, Chris. Um, especially with the other mic, you might get a, a reasonable amount of background noise, so apologies for that. And as I said yesterday, if there's any issues with the sound or um, the quality of the stream or anything like that, please, please let me know um, so that we can try and fix it as quickly as possible. This is literally our second time uh, streaming here. Yesterday was our first. So, give me one second. I'm just going to get them to start because they're shuffling for a long time. There we go, so we've finally worked out that uh, they can start setting out their opening hands. I'm really interested to see what Alex is actually playing here, because I don't know, he wasn't at the League Cup yesterday, so I really just, I have no idea what he's playing at the moment. Oh, you see that there was a die roll there after the setup, and both players setting their prizes, so that's okay. The leak challenge. These guys are in seniors. Sometimes this stuff happens. At least they're setting their prizes. There was one game yesterday where I almost forgot, and there was one game in finals where we almost forgot. So it happens. It happens to everybody. You're a beast, Sebby. You're a beast. All right. 
So we're having a look here. It looks like Luke has the Dawn Wings Necrozma active, which is not a bad starter if he can get that Zero Aura down. And Alex is going first. Um, he's got an active Choo Choo, and I believe he's just benched the Tapu Koko. Um, there's a reasonable amount of glare on that Tapu Koko, which is not nice. Uh, I'll see if I can fix that for the next round. But unfortunately, uh, we had everything set up, and then uh, the whatever tournament is going on out there decided they'd move everything. So we had to do another brief setup again. And it's created some glare on the left-hand side here. But yeah, that's a Tapu Koko bench there. Um, as I said, he's got, he's got the Choo Choo active. So... It looks like we've got a Picaron mirror. Which will be very interesting. That glare is really bad, so I'll do my best to cast it. So he's got a he's benched the Tapu Coco Prism, he's got a Pikazek and a Dedene. And he's just dead a changed for six. Discarded a switch, couple of energy it looks like. So he looks like he's set up really nicely. Yeah, Luke grabs that discard just to check. That EMAG, electromagnetic radar, it's just it's busted in this matchup, honestly. It's so crazy good. Um just the ability to get rid of those two energy straight away. Grab it with a Volkner, grab an energy, discard those energy, and then Coco Prism to attach. I'm assuming we'll see a Dance of the Ancients here. He's benched another Choo Choo. A lot of tag teams on the board at the moment. There's a Dance of the Ancients. And then going to the Lost Zone. Not the discard, as Alex rightly picks up. And he grabs those two energy. Actually, one to the Pikazek and one to the Choo Choo. There we go. Interesting call not to attach this uh, active Choo Choo. He doesn't have a Zero Aura down. So I'm not even sure he plays Zero Aura. We'll see, but he doesn't have one down. So he's going to need to hit a switch at some point. There you go. There's the energy switch. Oh, that's gone to the Pikazek. Okay. So he uh, he has a Picarom charged up. Turn one. Three energies on it. And then he Cynthia's. I noticed he had a Volkner in hand. He could have grabbed the energy and then the switch. But he reckons that he can hit it off the Cynthia, obviously, so... I mean, six fresh cards is always good. Yeah, you can never go wrong with that. I assume he's already used his Viridian once, but, I mean, he doesn't really need to either. It is going to help out Luke, though. I haven't seen Luke's hand too much, but... From what I can see, it looks like he's got a Thunder Mountain in there. Yeah, he does. A couple of Energy Switch, and then a Dedane. So he's going to have to Dead a Change all of that away, which will get him two energy in the discard, but it's going to be a big throw. There we go. He's drawn the Zero Aura, so that's handy. He's probably going to drop that Thunder Mountain, I reckon. He might even use the Viridium first to get rid of an energy, to draw another energy to discard before he... Okay. So he's playing the E-Power. No, he's just going to bump the Viridium. All right, so he's bumped the Viridium for his Thunder Mountain, and then he data changes... So he's got the one energy in the discard. Could have been two if he had a Viridian, Viridian first, but we'll see how it goes. He's got a Tag Switch, Stadium Nav, draws the Choo Choo as well. That's a lot of energy in his hand, and a Lily. So he's going to have to work out how to get this, this down, this hand down, to Lily for more than three, I think, or maybe four. Alright, Stadium Nav. Interesting call. Because if he gets two heads, which I think he got one head from the looks of it, I think it was a four and a one. But if he gets two heads there, he's extending his hand rather than diminishing it. So, <clears throat> looks like he's done it just for the deck check. And he'll grab this Viridian. Or maybe he won't, maybe he'll leave it in there. Yeah, he will, he will. He'll whiff, so he can Lily for five, I assume. Lily, yep, for five. There's a Kong. That's three. Oh, he's only Lily for three. Hold on. Keep, there we go. There we go. It's just going to pull that up. So he's got the switch in hand. 
He's got a comp, but he doesn't have a Pokemon to use it with, and he's already Lilied, so he can't grab a Edar with the Volkner, but that might be a good next turn. He might aim to retreat into the Dedene, maybe, just so it can't be sniped off the bench. Yeah, it, that's exactly what he's doing. He's retreating into the Dedene, so he doesn't lose... God, I cannot say Dedene. So he doesn't lose the Dawnwings, and then passing, so that even if Alex does get off this uh, full blitz for knockout, or even a tag bolt for knockout, which I don't think is possible at the moment, um, he, he can't snipe that Dedene down. He's just going to have to take the two prizes from the active. There you go. So you see the, the manual attachment to the active Choo Choo, which I thought was going to happen last turn, but didn't happen. There we go. That's an E-Power. So if we can get a full blitz onto this active Dedene, that will be a knockout. Alex is in a very commanding position at the moment. He just needs to find that Zera Aura so that... Oh, here we go. Stadium Nav. I don't know how that's going to help him that much. The Thunder Mountain... I mean, it doesn't help him, but it doesn't hinder him. But it doesn't matter because we've got two tails on that Stadium Nav. Typical luck. Typical luck. So he's going to Cynthia. He needs a Switch or the Zero Aura. As I said, I don't even know if Alex plays the Zero Aura. Those cards on his bench, just so you know, that's a it's a Choo Choo without the energy, and then a Pick a Rom with the energy, and then a Dedene, which you can probably see. So uh, I know that the glare is reasonably bad, but I'll do my best to help you out as I can, and then I'll try and fix it before the next round starts because that's yeah, it's not good. That's for sure. I know we have a light blocker on one side. I'll try and get one on the other side. But for this one, you're just going to have to deal with me telling you what the cards are, unfortunately. <laughs> so, he Cherish Balls. This is to grab the Zero Aura if he has one. Yep, that looks like a full art Zero Aura to me. It's a pure white card. You cannot distinguish that between the sleeves. There we go. As he puts his hand over it, you can see that's a Zero Aura. So, it looks like he's got the retreat here and he'll be able to full blitz. There it is. That Zero Aura coming down. And he's got free retreat and then a full blitz for a knockout. He'll take two prizes and attach three energy from his deck. Crazy attack if you can get it off and perfect to charge up the, the Picarom itself as well um, if you're not afraid of it being knocked out, which he's probably not here. So, I mean, 170 damage on the bench isn't particularly relevant. Um, I'm pretty sure Dawnwings has 180. Um, if it doesn't, if it has 170, that is very relevant. But, I mean... It's looking commanding. There you go. He goes to safe play, takes the Choo Choo, which isn't too bad because that Choo Choo can very easily, with its GX attack, knock out a tag team. So it could knock out Luke's, uh, Luke's own Choo Choo on the bench. There we go. Alex takes his prizes. Luke draws for turn. Emax straight off. So there we go. He discards two Lightning Energy. He's going to grab probably a Picaron and a Dedene. And then he'll probably calm the Dedene away, as I think he has another one in hand. There we go. So he's shuffling up. They go to hand. Offers a cut to his opponent. Very nice. Which is... There you go. He benches the Picarom. Is he going to calm for this Tapu Koko Prism? I'm not even sure the ta Tapu Koko Prism is in there, honestly. We'll see. There we go. He's going to con the Dedene, as I said. Away. We'll have a look for this Tapu Koko Prism. There it is. Alright, he's hit it. So that should give him an attack this turn, considering Thunder Mountain is in play. Um, he'll be able to manually attach to either... Uh, a, probably the Choo Choo, to get that paralysis off. Um, means that his opponent needs to find a switch, rather than just retreating out of it. Um, that's why playing this Dawn Wings is so handy. Because in the mirror or anything that paral paralyzes you, or um, puts you to sleep, like uh, the Merib deck, um, it, it just gives you that that out. It looks like he has manually attached to the Picarom though, so he's going to set up his own full blitz here, by the looks of it. Dance of the Ancients gets him those two energy. There we go. And it looks like he is. He's going to set up his own full blitz here, which is an interesting call. Um, because it means that Alex is definitely getting an attack off next turn rather than forcing him to find that switch. I mean, the decks both play Volkner, so a switch is very easy to find, but still, it forces him to have those cards. Here we go. Luke is Volknering. So he didn't need to Volkner for the, the Electromagnetic Radar, as I said last turn, because uh, he drew into it, he top-decked it. So he Volkner for the energy. 
I don't know what he's got in hand, but what's he eyeing off? A Cherish Ball. The energy and a Cherish Ball. All right. And he's using the Cherish Ball to grab him the Dedene. Okay. So he's actually going to throw this hand away, which is big. An interesting call grabbing the energy um, from the deck. It could run him short if he's planning on throwing this away because he's already attached for turn. He does have one Custom Catcher in hand as well. So he could have actually Custom Catchered up that Choo Choo to get some damage on it. And that would force a retreat and then a, a switch as well. So there you go. He throws. It was a fair bit. It was a, a switch, a Custom Catcher, an energy and something else. Uh, maybe an energy switch or, or something like that. Or a Stadium Nav, I think. No, he used his Stadium Nav. I don't know. But there was another card in there too. He's drawn into pretty much nothing, honestly. It's looking reasonably grim at the moment. And he hits a full blitz for 150. And I'd say three energy. Probably going to the choo choo. Yeah, it is. 100%. So it might have been worth Luke actually sitting on that hand. Because I can see Alex uh, retreating out of this and paralyzing Luke. Or maybe even taking a knockout. So it might have been worth him sitting on that hand from before just to um, hold on to a switch or anything like that. But he does have the Dawn Wing, so he'll be able to get out no matter what. If I was Alex, I'd be looking at targeting down this Zero Aura with a Tag Switch and a Manual Attach and then Tag Bolting the Zero Aura and the Dedane for game, if possible. Let's see if he sees that play or if he can, if he can make that play happen. He's got a Volkner. So Volkner could let him grab Tag Switch here. And if he can Tag Switch, then it's game. Because he's got that manual attach. I don't know if he runs Tag Switch or if he's got it in there. But we'll see. No, he grabs an Electro Power. Alright, that would, must mean that he, he doesn't have that Tag Switch at all. Whether he doesn't run it or whether it's prized, I, I don't know. But there you go. So he, go, he goes for the Choo Choo. Energy switches. So he did have an energy switch there. He goes for the choo choo again. So he's going to go for the GX attack with the choo choo. Alright. So that does, for those of you who don't know, if you have five energy on your choo choo, which he now has with ease uh, because of Thunder Mountain and the energy switch, um, he, uh, you do 250 damage and you retreat out rather than 150. So the extra, extra energy. Oh no, he only has the four on there. So the Thunder Mountain makes it five. No, he does have the 5 on there, okay. There you go. Um, so yeah, he would do 250 damage rather than 150 and retreat out. So it's kind of like crossing cut GX from Galissapod. If you can remember what that does, it was, uh, I think, 150 damage and uh, switch with a bench Pokemon. Um, for those of you who can't see, which should probably be everybody, the Pokemon with uh, damage on the bench is the Picarom that uh, Alex just retreated. Um, and... Uh, the other two Pokemon are now a Choo Choo with five energy. That's the thicker looking card there. And the other one is a, a full art zero aura. I know that there is glare, but uh, we'll try to fix that before the next game. That's for sure. All right. So Luke, he promotes that, that uh, Dawn Wings. He has lost his Picaron, but he does have a charged up Choo Choo. The issue is... He needs double... He's got it. He's got the double custom catcher. There you go. So now he can take out the the choo-choo... Alex the choo-choo with five energy. With his own choo-choo with five energy for this knockout. So he will need an Electro Power. He's got the five. I don't know if he played it already. I might have missed it. There it is. The Electro Power. So that'll let him return the knockout and do exactly what Alex did last turn. It probably hurts Alex a little bit more. Although he does still have that Picarom there. It would have helped if Luke could bump the stadium, I think. There you go. He switches into the Zero Aura, which is a big call. Um, because uh, it means that his free retreat is gone. But he had to switch into something and it has the most HP. So it means that Alex needs to hit two uh, Electro Powers or his own double custom catcher rather than one. So... Alex is looking through his discard. He's got a Poke Gear in hand. I can't see the rest. He's holding it a long way back. And probably even if he's holding it forward. I think I saw a Cherish Ball in there. A Volkner. Yeah, he's about to play the Volkner. There you go. He eyes off that Volkner. 
It hits the discard. He grabs the Electra Power and the Energy. Does he have a second Electra Power in hand is the question. He could have also gone for a Dedenne into it. He's definitely used two Electra Power already. I don't know if he's used a third though. There it is. That's it. That's a full Blitz for game. He, that's it. Well done. Well played, guys. Well played. So as you saw there, Alex, uh, he had the full Blitz for game. The Picarom had two energy on it already. There was a Thunder Mountain in play. He had a manual attach anyway, even if there wasn't. And he just had the Volkner for that Electra Power. And that was that was it. That was game there. Yeah, don't forget that Tapu Koko, man. That's it. So I'll be right back. I just want to go see if I can fix that glare quickly now. One second. All right, so you may have seen my uh, lovely hands there, trying to help the boys uh, set up the table. We just had to move it. It looks like we fixed the glare, so that's handy. And hopefully you guys will be able to see the cards from now on. Um, yeah, so Alex took that game, not with reasonable ease, but he never looked like he was too troubled. Um, when Luke took that knockout on his Alex's choo-choo, um, it probably put him back a step. I don't think he was expecting to lose it. But then he already had an, one Electra Power in hand. He just had to Volkner for the second one. And that was a knockout anyway. So Luke would have preferred to um, do that GX attack and not switch out if possible. But, I mean, you can't have everything, can you? So 250 damage is, is a lot. I guess it has to have some drawback. And a lot of the time switching out isn't even drawback. So... Looks like they're shuffling and setting up for game two. I'm 
I'm not sure if maybe they know that they're allowed to set up for game two. I might just give them an okay signal. Give me one second. Yeah, there you go. So now they're, they're setting up. Drawing their seven cards. What have we got here? So it looks like... Luke's opening a zero aura. I didn't see what Alex was opening. Both have Lily in their hand. Which is an optimal turn one supporter. Not for long, but... <laughs> it is optimal at the moment. They've remembered their prizes, which is nice. Alex just trying to order them out nicely for us. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, both boys are set up. I reckon Luke's probably going first after losing that game one. Oh, he's opened the Pikazek. Alex has opened the Zero Aura. And Alex is going first. Well, wow, shows what I know. There you go. So Alex opens with a Cherish Bolt. I don't know what he's going for. He might go for a Dedene if his hand's really bad. He's doing a thorough deck search, which is pro strats right there. Really nice. Good to see. So he's eyeing off. It looked like a Choo Choo. No, it's a Pikazek. Man, I need to stop guessing what these cards are. I'm telling you. So he's eyed off this Picarom. See what he has in his hand. He's obviously going back in because he hasn't shuffled. He does have a Volknight and he looks like he's about to choose that over a Lily. So he's probably going to hit this Edar. And then, so Electromagnetic Radar. And then discard the energy in his hand and the energy he gets off Volkner. Oh, hold on. He's Volknering for a Dedene by the looks of it, which is a, interesting. There you go. Luke's obviously picked him up on that one. Or he's obviously picked himself up. There's the energy. And he'll grab that Electromagnetic Radar, I reckon. Ideal start here from Alex. I know he has that Lily in hand, but obviously he couldn't play down his hand that much without Volknering. So he just goes for the Electromagnetic Radar. There you go. I was going to say, I'm not sure why he's shuffling up. He's about to go back in. He doesn't have another energy in hand. So it's only going to get him the one attachment with the Dance of the Ancients. And he might throw... Probably throws everything here. There you go. So he throws the Custom Catcher. And an energy with that Electromagnetic Radar. He's probably going to aim for a Choo Choo and a Dedene, I would say. I'm not sure if he has the Pokecom to grab the, the Tapu Koko Prism at the moment. But if he does, that would be really handy. No, he doesn't. So he benches the Choo Choo. He does have the Pokecom. There you go. He's coming. He showed it to Luke. He didn't show it to us. I assume it was a Dedene. But I don't see... Oh, there it is. There it is. There you go. The Tapu Koko Prism is in there. There it is. Wonderful. So he's grabbed his Tapu Koko Prism. He can only dance with the Ancients for one at the moment. He's probably looking to dead a change to get a fresh hand of six and hopefully hit a Viridian Forest to uh, discard another energy so that he can dance with the Ancients for more than one energy. Especially as he doesn't have a manual attachment in his hand at the moment. There's the dead a change. Gets rid of a Lily and another communication. There you go, six fresh cards. Does he hit a way to discard an energy? He's got a manual attach there. No, he's taking it back. All right. No, he is going to a manual attach to that picker wrong. Oh. Up and down and up and down. There you go. Luke checks that discard again just to see what resources are gone. There you go. It was a Lily and an energy switch that he threw away with the data change. Energy switch can be a big card. So, as we saw last game, Alex could have had a tag switch win a turn earlier, but he, he missed attack switch. Attack switch can also be achieved with double energy switch. So, looks like he's eyeing up what to do next. He has a manual attachment. He's going to dance at the ancients for one to his Picarom. Big call, not getting the full effect of it, but I think you have to do it. I mean, we don't know what Luke's hand's like, but there is a chance that you could lose that Tapu Koko next turn and that would put you behind that extra attachment it's just so handy you can't afford to miss out on it luke's hand looks rough he's got a zero aura there he does have a pokecom 
So he can throw his whole hand with the Dedene. He's going to do it. Okay, so he, he's going to come away the Zero Aura. We'll have a look at what he's searching for. I reckon it's a Dedene because his hand is dead other than that. It is absolutely dead. He has a Lily, but he has no real way to thin his hand down other than a Dedene here. So I reckon he's going to look to to replicate something similar to what Alex did in Volkner in turn one to grab that, that Coco. And then if he can grab that Coco Prism, he should actually be ahead here because he's got, he will have three energy in his discard. He plays the Electric Power and then throws away two energy and a Pokecom. So if he can hit this Coco Prism, he's going to get the full effect of Dance of the Ancients. Unlike Alex's one. It looks like he has a Pokecom there. Oh, he's got he's got the manual Coco Prism. You cannot ask for anything better than just manually drawing into your one-off, that's for sure. Alright. He doesn't he's got a Cherish Ball and a Pokecom, but he doesn't have a way to get two other Pokemon down. But that's not a big deal because uh What's he going for? A choo choo. It's not a big deal because he can always energy switch off the Dedene at some point. It looks like he's going for a choo choo rather than a Zero Aura. No, he is. He's going for that Zero Aura. Great call by Luke there, it gives him the free retreat. And hopefully he can dance with the Ancients here and hit either Double Energy Switch or Thunder Mountain to set up a full Blitz. It doesn't look like he has much though. I think it, uh, that's either a Calm or an Energy Switch in his hand, but it's only one. It's an Energy Switch, but it's, uh, it's only one. So he can't get that attack off. He's going to retreat out here. He can, he can. This is a great play by Luke. So he's, oh no. He had an attack there and he missed it. That's okay though. So he could have danced at the Ancients there to attach to both and then use his switch card and energy switch to the pick roll to hit it with full blitz there. Really unfortunate that he didn't see that line of play because that would have put him so far ahead, especially as he could have cynthia after doing all that as well and then hit another Electro Power and even got a knockout with the attack. So it's unfortunate he didn't see that. Hopefully he draws into an energy switch and the switch here and he sees the, the line of play. There you go, what's he drawn into? He's got an energy switch for sure. He's got that Jirachi, or Jirachi, uh, and he's benched it. Probably expecting to lose the Dedene this turn. So it gives him, he does have the switch, and I think he's got the energy switch. So if he can dance with the Ancients here, he just needs to see this line of play. Dance with the Ancients, that's it. And then attach the two energy, one to pick her on, and one to wherever he wants, as long as he can energy switch it away. And then he energy switches. And he does have the E power as well. Switch in. Does he have this energy switch? I think he does. I thought I saw it, but maybe he doesn't. Oh, he's using extra E power. There you go. He does it. Luke's missed it. He's gone to attack with two energy. And he can't. He's realized that he can't full blitz at the moment. He doesn't have a Thunder Mountain out. Oh, no. Luke. He's, he's used three Electro Powers that turn, which is one extra than he needed. And unfortunately, he hasn't hit that energy switch the second time around, so he can't he can't switch back onto his Picarom to attack. Lucky he didn't pick up his deck there, otherwise we could have had some, uh, some real um, trouble. But that's okay, because now it's Alex's turn. I'm just going to update the scoreboard, and I'm going to have to remember to do that all day. We do have a best of three. I'm not used to having best of three challenge. It used to be a best of three cup, but not challenge, so. There we go, we're back. All right, so Alex is gonna Cynthia straight up. He has dropped that Thunder Mountain, which must hurt for Luke, honestly, because if Luke had that last turn, that would have been a knockout and some on that Zero Aura, and he'd have three extra energy on the board at the moment, so. Kind of a rubbing it in Luke's face here a bit, Alex. He's, he's dropped that Thunder Mountain about 15 seconds after Luke needed it. Which is very harsh, but... Hey, that's the way the Pokemon TCG is at some points, isn't it? So both players have used their Coco Prism. Both players have hit their Coco Prism first turn of both games, which is insane. It just shows how consistent this pick rom deck is. It very rarely misses anything that it needs. It's just that sometimes what it needs isn't quite enough. So Alex has that free retreat out of this Zero Aura here. He's got the Thunder Mountain in play, so he doesn't even need to hit an energy switch or attach at all. 
Now remember, Alex has manually attached to that Zera Aura for turn. And he's electropowered here. So that's 180 damage on Luke's active pick -a And he's going to full blitz. Oh, Luke is already halfway through his turn before the energies have, have been put on. He doesn't care where they're going. He's just going to knock them out. There we go. Okay, so Luke's manually attached to his active pick -a He's going to Cynthia instead of the Dene. He did top deck the Dedene, but Dedene is such a hard word to say. So with 180 on that Picarom, he's going to need to hit something else here. Like another attacker to full blitz too, because he's going to lose that Picarom next turn, 100%. There is no way that he's keeping that at all. It could be worse if uh, Alex manages to hit like, double catcher and then a tag switch or something like that because uh, then he could get a tag bolt off and take it out on the bench whilst also taking out something else. Which would be really nasty. Alex has only used the one Electra Power as well, so he should actually... like there, there is a good chance that he can win this game on the next turn. That's how good Tag Bolt GX is. Luke seems to be a bit stuck at the moment. He hasn't found another attacker. He's got the Zero Aura on the bench, but it's not something you really want to lose. Um... Yeah, it's really not something you want to lose. So he, he's just gone for the full blitz. 150 to the active Picarom. And he's going to drop three energies, I say, on the Zero Aura. He's going to drop two energies on the Zero Aura. Right, okay. So he's not going for the, the extra. Which it makes sense because Zero Aura is uh, never going to attack for four. It doesn't have that GX attack where it needs the extra energy. But he could have used uh, an extra energy to energy switch at some point. So... Debates there as to whether he wanted to attach that or not. Now, if Alex can hit this tag switch somehow, I don't know what he just combed in, but he combed something back in. If Alex can hit a tag switch somehow, he can take five prizes this turn and still have a Raichu set up. No, he can't have a Raichu set up, but he, he can still he can take five prizes this turn, which would put Luke behind a lot. So, here we go. He combed for another choo-choo. Benches that one. The manual attach, where's it going? Alex, where's it going? He looks like he's going to attach to the other choo-choo, which is interesting because he already has one set up. He's probably going to lose his active picker on at the end of this turn anyway. And he's got a lot of energy on board. I'm not sure how much he's got left in deck. I don't know how many he runs, but... We'll see if we can see here. Unfortunately, Alex holds his hand really close to him, so I can't see. But he, there you go. He goes for the E-Power, which is not needed this turn, but it might be needed next turn. And then the he also goes for the Energy. Now, I only saw that one Energy that he grabbed, but that doesn't mean that he had a lot because he, he had none left because he didn't actually go through his deck that much. He retreats, ah, and he takes out Luke's Picarom with his Choo Choo. So he's got an active Choo Choo with no damage on it. His Picarom's on the bench. Luke's Picarom is in the discard, so he's not going to tag bolt GX at all this turn for the extra uh, 170 to the bench, which means that Alex is not going to lose this turn. And Luke doesn't have the Electra Power to, uh, to take out this Choo Choo at the moment, unfortunately, because he did use them all on the first turn. So, there you go. He's going to Electromagnetic Radar, getting rid of the Dawn Wings, which is not too much of a problem. He does have a Jirachi there with a, an Escape Board. And then Stadium Nav. And it will grab him a Shuma Choo Choo or a Picarom. A Choo Choo. And that looks to be it. I didn't see... Oh, no, there's a Dedene right underneath the Choo Choo. There you go. So, a Choo Choo and a Picarom. He's not going for the Dedene at all. All right. So he's used his supporter for turn. He hasn't manually attached. He's probably going to lose his Zero Aura next turn, you would think. Because he's not going to knock out the, the uh, Alex's Choo Choo. And Alex should be able to GX attack for a knockout next turn. He may be able to take out the Bench Picarom, though. I don't know how many Custom Catcher he has in hand. No, he hasn't gone for the Custom Catcher off the Stellar Witch. So I'd say he doesn't have one in hand. Because otherwise that would probably be the line of play there. To take out that bench pick Rom and have no risk of losing next turn. 
He's got the energy switch. He's going to pick a ROM. This is a great play by Luke. It means that he can full blitz and set up another attacker. And the chances of him getting knocked out are actually are pretty high now that I think about it. Because uh, Alex has the energy and the electric power in hand from last turn. So it will be 150 damage. But I think I think Luke's just lost it here, honestly. Because I know Alex has the electric power. He Vulcan for it last turn. He did manually attach. But was that the only energy he had in hand? So Luke loses as long as Alex has an energy or an out to energy or an energy switch or a tag switch. So we'll see. Alex has Volkner. So as long as he has an energy in deck, he's got game here. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure that Alex actually has any energy left in deck. No, there you go. There's one in hand. So I, I don't know if he sees it or not. He gets rid of his reset stamp. This is strange by Alex. I don't know. Maybe he's just prolonging it a little bit. Looking through his deck to see what cards he has in when he wins. But he does have game in hand. Because the Thunder Mountain is in play. He just needs to attach to this Choo Choo. He doesn't even need to Electro Power. Because Picarom only has 240. So it's just an attachment. That's all he needs. And then it's a knockout. There's three on there. He attaches this. And then he announces his GX attack for game, hopefully. He Poke Gears. <laughs> It's just like on PTCGO when you know your opponent's got game. They're just looking to get their damage up as much as possible. He's pokey gearing. He's probably going to look for the Volkner for the electric power to get his daily challenge finished. There you go. He's counting. He's counting now. He might see this. He might see this play. Hopefully he does. Here we go. He grabs the... I don't even think he grabbed anything with the Poker Gear. He's got a Zero Aura in play, so he can even go back into the pick run. But I think he's I think he's counting now. He's working it out. He can go, oh, I can just GX attack, and that's game. And I win. Maybe he's just trying to count the damage to see if he's doing enough. I don't, I don't know. It's interesting. This is what I mean. It's interesting to see this. There you go. He's worked it out. He's worked out that he does have the GX attack. That's it. Alex has flipped over his GX counter. And we have your first round winner, Alex Griggs, over Luke Mason in the Picaron mirror. Uh, I will try and grab Alex for a winner's interview quickly after this. Um, I'm not sure if he'll want to or not, but we'll give it a go. That matchup, uh, it was very interesting. Unfortunately for Luke, he didn't see that play on turn one where he could have taken a knockout on uh, the active Zero Aura. Um, he, he missed the energy switch and Cynthia did away and then hit all the pieces that he needed again except the energy switch. And I think he may have thought that he actually did energy switch before Cynthia ring um, because he went to attack and then realized that there were only two energy on it so i think he just might have miscounted the amount of energy he had on it or something like that yeah don't forget that tapu coco yeah there you go luke also forgot his so. there we are so there you have it alex griggs beats a uh, luke mason uh 2-0 and uh i'll go see if i can grab alex for a winner's interview um and be right back
There we go. I'm back. And Alex is back. Okay, so we're here. Oh, he can't see him over the paper. Hold on. There we go. All right, now you can see him. We're here with Alex Griggs, who won the last match that you might have watched. Um, it was in the pick and mirror. Alex, how did you feel you went? You feel like, obviously, you beat him 2-0, and you seemed in control all the time, didn't you? You always got that tap of Coco first turn as well. Yeah? Did yeah. you feel like your deck worked really well? Uh, yeah, I do. It was really consistent. Yeah, really consistent? That's good. That's good. Hold on. I'm just trying to work out if we can hear you. I think we can now. It was really consistent. Exactly. I was talking about how you got that Tapu Koko turn one every time. You mm -hmm. always had a pick wrong set up, ready to go for yeah. that second turn when you um, played against Luke. Now, you in that first game, you lost your Choo Choo with five energy on it, and you had to pick a wrong for the, for the win. Um, were you a bit worried when you, when you lost that Choo Choo, when Luke managed to get that KO again? Um... A bit, yeah, I do. Yeah, a little bit worried, yeah? When he got that double custom catcher, did your heart drop a little bit? You were like, oh no, he's, he's knocked out my attacker, what can I do now? Yeah, a, a bit like that, yeah, yeah. a little bit like that. Yeah, I bet it was. And um, But you managed to find that knockout, and then in that second yeah. game, it was pretty easy going. Luke missed the attack on that second at that second turn. That was um, a bit rough. He actually, he had it in hand at one point, and then he sent it away. I think he thought he might have had three energy on that pick -on, but you managed to stop yeah. him before he went into that deck on that full blitz, didn't you? So... Um, and you were probably jumping for joy a little bit. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, he was a bit sad about it, but um, you were pretty happy about that, how that second game went as well. Oh uh, yeah, wasn't expecting to beat Luke, but you weren't expecting to beat him at all. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. And so it's a big victory for you then. Yeah. There you go. And you're one zero going into the rest of the day. Do you reckon you can win it all? Uh, maybe. Well, yeah, maybe. That's a confidence I like to see. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alex. We'll be right back, guys, um, with the, the next round. I don't know who we've got on stream yet, but I'll let you know. Uh, I think there's about four minutes left in the round. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll be back with another stream. I think Lewis is going to cast it for you. So we'll see how it goes. And thank you very much, Alex, for being on stream and no coming to talk with us. And yep. well done and good luck for the rest of the day. Thanks.
All right, and we are back. Um, we've got a special treat for you. We've got a special treat for you. It's um, FBG's own Lewis Stevens versus uh, Josh Tutlow in the seniors division. Um, now... Sorry, just making sure that door's closed so they couldn't hear me. Um, now, Lewis is playing one of my favorite decks at the moment. Um, he's playing the what we like to call the bourgeoisie, but uh, it's actually a Pidgey stall. So he's playing Pidgeotto. And uh, Josh, I have no idea what Josh is on at the moment, but he's mulliganed. I didn't see what the mulligan was, but he has mulligan. So uh, I think both players won their first round, I believe. Um, so we've got two players who are 1-0 here, and a win here would probably put them in first for the day, I reckon. So let's see how it goes. Lewis has opened, there we go. Lewis has opened Ditto, he's taken his mulligan, and it looks like Josh is on Malamar. Both players have started, Lewis optimal start here. He's got the, the arm straight away for three Pidgeys. As long as they're in there, that is. He's searching. You can see how quick Lewis is being with his deck search. Um, that's because this deck takes so long to get through a game. So, so long. He's only got two Pidgeys. There you have it. So, not that Malamar usually takes a knockout on turn one. But if he loses this Ditto, that's going to be big for Lewis. Because he only has the two other Pidgeys. And that means that he'll be Brock's gritting for two. And that's it. He can't get those Pidgeys from his prizes because he doesn't take prizes usually. Um, there is, oh no, there you go. He had the manual Pidgey in hand, that's why. So he has only prize one. He should be fine here. Um, Acro Bike. Getting rid of the Surge. I'm not sure what he picked up. Acro Bike. So the idea of this deck is to, to just dig as much as possible, like as much as humanly possible. Get your deck size down really low and then just loop them consistently. Now Lewis plays an interesting version of the deck. He actually plays the Jesse and James version. Um, so yeah, we do have yeah, we've got a Pidgeotto overlay. So Pidgeotto is the crux of this deck. It makes the consistency. He's got an airmail ability, which is basically a um, acrobat, except the other card goes to the bottom of your deck instead of discarding it, which is really important. Now Josh has energy spinned here. Wow. Energy spinner. That's big. He treasures away one energy, which is good. He's getting he's getting energy in his discard already to be uh, psychic recharge. He's probably looking to grab a Malamar, I reckon. No, what's he grabbed here? I can't even see what that is. Hold on, give me one second. What has he grabbed here? Oh, it's a muck muck. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> Josh has benched. An Alolan Muck and Muck Tag Team GX, um, which has a few interesting attacks. Uh, the most notable of which is probably, I don't even know if it's the first attack, which is uh, um, a, an 8 damage poison, essentially. Or the second attack, which is um, uh, the GX attack, which is like a 15 damage poison and a bunch of other special uh, uh, like effects. So. I don't know, he's got the second NK here. He's probably thinking he's gonna lose an NK. But he's not, <laughs> because Lewis isn't gonna attack, so. He does have the second NK here. His manual attached for turn. He has a mind report Mewtwo in his hand, and he comms that away. Probably for another NK, honestly. Balamar needs to get set up. He's not gonna lose any NKs in this game, so he can, he can be safe knowing that. But. There we go. He grabs that NK. <coughs> oh. He doesn't grab that NK. He grabs a Malamar. Okay. So he's, he's going to grab a Mally. Put it in hand. So that guarantees him a Malamar next turn. Except if Lewis stamps him. So Lewis does rely on reset stamp. And we enter Lewis's turn. One Pidgeotto. Two Pidgeottos. I think I see a third as well in his hand. There you go. ML once. I don't see the cards at all. I don't see what he grabs. I don't. This is the difficult thing about casting this deck is that <clears throat> if Lewis doesn't show me his emails, 
and he goes through them so quickly. That was that one was a crushing hammer. He got a crushing hammer there. The issue is, this is a really bad matchup for Lewis's deck. So he draws two. That's a Mars. He draws two. He gets to pick a random card from his opponent's hand and put it in the discard. And for Josh, that is great because that is the psychic energy, which he can just psychic rage out straight back up. So the problem with um, playing against a Malamar deck as a as this uh, bird stall deck is that these crushing hammers don't really matter that much because Malamar can just get them back. Unless you're hitting two crushing hammers per turn, which as you saw, Lewis flipped the tails on that one, then you're going to be struggling. So you might notice that Lewis plays a rainbow. That is specifically for the Mew Mew matchup because he plays a Latios GX instead of two Articuno GX. He plays one Latios GX. So um, that's there. Oh, that was an interesting move by Josh. He's going to keep his Muck Muck on the bench instead of retreating out the Inke. Um, but the Latios GX is there to stop any people using their GX attacks using clear vision. So you can't lose to a cross divide or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting play. I wouldn't. I would have thought the damage um, from that comes from the rainbow outdid the cross division. Uh, the the rainbow energies pros. Honestly, I like the Articuno build, but this deck is uh, it's working well for him. He's <laughs> won a couple of challenges with it already. So there you go. You see, Lewis initiate all the air mails. His hand size is huge. I really think you should start playing Unknown Hand because you just see so many cards that you can you can build it up. There you go, he Marses for two discards. Oh, discards nothing. A Pokecon, there you go. So that's it's not really gonna help at all. Because uh Josh already has his Malamars out, so it'll be interesting to see. This this Muck Muck could be really prone to being stuck in the active at some point. So it'll be really interesting to see if Lewis can get this Muck Muck stuck in the active, but he will need to hit a lot of crushing hammers. And remember, Malmar only psychic recharges onto the bench as well. So it, can, it can't psychic recharge to the Muck Muck if it's inactive. Lewis grabs resource management and he grabs a rainbow, an orange guru, and a Mars. All right, and now we're on to Josh's turn. Yeah, look at that beautiful overlay. Thank you very much, uh, Jamie McDonald, uh, for setting that up. And I will completely forget to do them, and you will think that it's just a Malamar mirror match because there will be a Malamar on the side forever. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So he's actually Josh is attached to the Malamar, the active Malamar, and is probably hoping to retreat it next turn. The issue will be that he can't retreat it this turn. He really needs to, he probably really needed to get rid of that ditto, honestly. Um, Lewis has done really well in protecting his Pidgeotas here, which is a big part of this, this deck and this deck's game to protect those Pidgeotas that way. You see a buff padding in there. That's huge for every other matchup except this. Imagine getting a Muck Muck with, I think, I think it has 280 health, so like 320 health with that, uh, that buff padding. It's crazy. Here you go. We see a Psychic Recharge to the Gengar. There is another energy in that discard, I think. So he probably could um, could have Psychic Recharged again, but he, he didn't. So, and he passes over to Luke. Uh, to Luke. Luke was last game. Passes over to Lewis. There we go. So Lewis is blasting through his turns. He's got four air mails on board right now. So that means he sees four extra cards. It, technically, he sees eight extra cards, and he can pick four of them. It's just it's crazy how consistent this deck can be when he sees he sets up. He acro bikes for the poker gear. Now Lewis is honestly probably waiting for Josh to actually take a prize here at some point. He flips a heads on the crushing hammer. Ah. Oh, and it keeps the Malamar in the active. Great heads there. And that means that the Malamar needs to double attach again to get out of the active. And that's what I was trying to say before as Lewis resource manages for double crushing hammer and a surge. And as you notice, I didn't change 
the Malmar <laughs> at all. So um, that's what I was trying to say before is that if Josh plays them, and a skateboard actually might have been an ideal... Um... Oh, wow. He's played a Koga. Oh, okay. So Koga's... <laughs> that poisons and confuses your opponent. So, um, was it a Koga? Yeah, it was a Koga's trap. Okay, so it poisons and confuses your opponent. So Lewis is going to need to flip out of this resource management here. And he's going to take 10 damage per turn for every time that he doesn't retreat. So Lewis will take 10 damage between the turns. You see that lovely uh, No Josh Collectibles dice there um, on top of Lewis's Oranguru. That will change to a 2 between his turns. And then Lewis has to find a way to get this Oranguru out of the active or flip heads when Confusion flips. Honestly, he might just flip heads because he's probably not that annoyed about losing this Oranguru. As I was trying to say before is that as we switch turns, Josh switches turns and goes to... Um, Goes to Lewis's turn, and Lewis and immediately, like immediately, starts going crazy. Look at his pace of play. That's the thing with this Pidgeotto deck. You need to play this fast to get through it. As Josh munches on his card there, his lone card in his hand. There you go. He's got the switch. He plays the Tate and Liza, which gives him that switch. He definitely wouldn't have been expecting that Kogut's trap at all. There's an attachment, and it's a recycle energy as well. <laughs> it's a secret rare recycle energy, so. There you go. And he just resource manages straight up. I'm not even sure he airmailed all the times that he could have there. I think I saw two. He grabs two Acrobikes and a Mars. Now, that would be just to dig through his deck as much as possible. So Josh has started his turn. I think he top decked the Cynthia, which is great, <laughs> like really good for him, uh, because he's he had a hand of one. As I said, he was eating that hand of one, and uh, that was it. You know, like top decking the Cynthia gives him six extra cards. It gives him that manual attach, makes Lewis have to hit a crushing hammer, and Lewis is probably picking up his hand, looking to see if he has a crushing hammer. There we go. Swap back over to Lewis's turn. He airmails for a second time, airmails for a third time. Look at how quickly he gets through these airmails. And there's the fourth time. That's it. So he just did all four of his airmails that quickly. It's crazy fast, his speed of play. He does have a Jesse and James in hands. There you go. So uh, I think Joshua will find out very quickly how these cards work. He needs to choose to get rid of two cards. That's it. He gets rid of Giratina, which can distortion door. And then a power plant. Now, that Giratina for the Sorcian Door would have been good if Josh plays... Here's a Crushing Hammer Flip, by the way. This is big. This will decide whether Malamar can retreat or not. And look, that's a tail. So unless Lewis has... There you go, another Crushing Hammer. He's going to flip again. That's a heads. Okay, so the Malamar is not retreating next turn, which is big. Because it means that uh, Josh is still not getting a knockout. And Lewis Resource manages both Crushing Hammers and an Acrobite to dig for the Crushing Hammers. So... There we go. Now, what I was saying before is that that um, that or uh, that Giratina would have been big with the Distortion Door if Josh. I think Josh just drew past. There you go. Lewis is back. We're back on Lewis. I've uh, literally I switched the overlay to Pidgeotto, and then we <laughs> went straight back to Lewis uh, to Malamar, and then we went straight back to Lewis's turn. He's air mount. He's used all his air mounts. I don't think he hit any crushing hammers, but that doesn't matter because uh, Josh. Did not attach to the active, so he cannot retreat it at the moment. He Marses, grabs two. One of them's an Acrobike. I think the other was a Crushing Hammer. Gets rid of an Inkay from Josh's hand. Acrobikes, getting rid of Poke Gear. Acrobikes again. Getting rid of Oranguru and grabbing a Rainbow Energy. So, yeah, as I was saying, that Distortion Door would be big if, uh, as Lewis resource manager for Jesse James and Mars and Acrobike. Um, yeah, the distortion door would have been big if uh, Josh could get off a cross division because it puts the PGOs down to 50 HP. But firstly, I'm not even sure Josh plays the Espeon Deoxys. And secondly, he wouldn't have the bench space to put both the Giratina and the Espeon Deoxys at the moment. So it's a rough spot for him to be in. Lewis needs to hit these crushing hammers, which he absolutely should. 
He masses, draws two. One of them's a crushing hammer, so he needs to hit these. Flips off the table. <laughs> and it was a tails, obviously. He's got two more, so flips again. Heads, there you go. And he'll probably save his last one, I think. He might use it, I don't know. It might get rid of a bench energy, but that can just be recharged back, it's no point. There you go, so he's resource managing back two crushing hammers and a Mars. Josh draws for turn, attaches the energy that he top deck and passes back to Lewis. And Pidgeotto goes again. He flips heads on his first crushing hammer. He airmails back his whole deck. There you go. So Lewis is down to none, and that's where this lock comes in. Lewis has achieved the perfect loop now, okay? He can have access to air. I don't know where he went for the acrobatics. I assume he doesn't have anything left in hand. But uh, he really should have chip-chipped that turn. So chip-chip pickaxe, uh, it lets you look at your opponent's top three cards, and then you choose one of them, it goes on top of the deck, and you shuffle the rest back in. So you can control your opponent's top deck. And because he didn't chip chip pickaxe, it might even be prize. I don't see one in his hand. And he's not taking it back from uh, the discard. So maybe he doesn't even have a chip chip pickaxe. He plays two. <coughs> I reckon they're both prize. There's a heads. Melmar's losing the energy. And Josh must be running low on the energy now. I know that Lewis has... <coughs> sorry, Lewis has four heads. So that means there's been ten total energy at the moment. I'm just going to quickly grab a drink of water so that I don't keep coughing into the microphone. <coughs> I think that's what Josh is looking at now. He's looking at how many energy are in his discard. He sees four there. I think that's it. There's four. So he's got 10 in there. I assume a Malamar list is anywhere from 11 to 13. So he does have access to it. There's one. And he passes. All right. So Lewis just needs to... if. He flips tails on all of these crushing hammers, and Josh might be able to do something here, but otherwise, he gets a single heads. There's one tails. There you go, there's a heads. All right, he's really locking Josh out of this game. And I think that Josh, at some point, Lewis bumps the stadium with a power plant. I think that Josh, at some point, will realize that if, like, once he's run out of energy, that's it. He hasn't hit a switch or anything like that. Lewis, Jesse, and James's. Josh chooses what to d to discard. It's a treasure. And uh, the other Machma. As Lewis discards a Poke Gear and another Poke Gear, I think. And then he resource mentions back Oranguru and Double Crushing Hammer. So usually, usually what Lewis wants to do is he wants to use his Chip Chip Ice Axe to, um, control that top deck but because he hasn't been able to do that at the moment Josh keeps top decking these supporters after Lewis gets his hand size down so Josh can replenish his hand size unfortunately for Josh as I was saying before he's probably almost out of energy and his deck is getting very thin so this could be one of the quickest Pidgeotto games I have ever seen and Lewis hasn't controlled the top deck at all it's just that Josh keeps getting milled so quickly he gets rid of an energy he treasures away an energy. Oh, Josh. There you go. He extends the hand. That's it. He looked in his deck. He was like, is there a switch in there? Is there something that, that I can use? There you go. There's, there's a switch in the prizes as he puts it out for us now. Um, yeah, that <laughs> it was insane. It was just so quick. And I think Josh made the right decision to scoop because uh, if he, yeah, if he wants to get back into it, you know, like get back into this game, He's going to need to take the next one pretty quickly. And if he had have held on for another four or five turns, that just would have been a waste of a couple of minutes that he could use in this game to win it. Uh, I will be right back. I'm just going to grab a drink of water and I'm just going to go talk to the players quickly.
Uh, yes, uh, we're, we're back, and David did let him play it. For those of you who don't know, um, Lewis is a fellow FPG member, uh, Full Bench Gaming, and his dad, David, is also on the team. And uh, David told Lewis yesterday in the cup that he wasn't allowed to play uh, the Pidgeotto deck um, because uh, it took him too long and he was just going to tie all the time. So, uh, But today, Lewis is allowed to go back to his... his um, Crux deck, and uh, we've got, as it's a best of three, he can probably get three games. So Lewis hits that Elms. Josh's turn was very quick. He Kogas, which is probably important. And then Elms. Another important thing is he, he did open this Muck Muck here. Looks like Lewis has prized the Pidgey again. So uh, he'll only be down to three. Although, <coughs> he must have prized a Ditto as well. Because it seems like... He definitely had four last game, didn't he? But but he would have grabbed a Ditto rather than a Pidgeotto with that that last Elms, I would have thought. Unless his hand was completely dead. Discards a Jesse and James off the Acrobike. And you notice how much quicker Lewis's turns get when he's got that lock established. Um, as he sets up, it gets a, a little bit slower. Just purely because... He has to actually think through his plays, whereas uh, once he gets that luck established, it's the same thing every turn. He just needs to do it as quickly as possible. Now Josh has that buff padding on the active muck muck, which as I said before, would have been insane in any other matchup, but uh, Lewis isn't doing damage, so here we go, the ML start, <coughs> Lewis turns down a power pad for a chip chip, there you go. So. That is the chip chip uh, ice axe that I was talking about. Is that it controls the opponent's top deck so he, he can choose what he wants his opponent to have. He gets rid of Cynthia and picks up a crushing hammer. And that is going to try and get rid of the energy on this muck muck at the moment. Now Lewis actually has a rainbow in hand that he could attach to this Oranguru. But because he doesn't have an another Oranguru on the bench at the moment, he probably just wants to wait and not try and flip out of anything. Oh, Lewis hits a Cynthia. I think that makes Josh's hand completely dead. There's no way he's going to have to top deck his way out of this. I'm not even sure he's got the energy there to attach. It's hard to see because I, I couldn't see the three cards closest to the camera. But um, the last two cards were, were absolutely nothing. So... There you go, Lewis does attach the rainbow, even without that bench on Guru. He is going to try and resource management here. He flips a heads. Alright, so he picks up the crushing hammer, an acrobike, and another acrobike. Great call by Lewis there. It gives him consistency and gives him that crushing hammer. So, they do, after your resource management, they do go to the bottom of your deck, the cards. So, he won't see them for a while unless he manages to shuffle his deck somehow, which he can do with a few of his supporter cards. Um, but Lewis's idea is just to, to get through that deck as quickly as possible, so he's drawing into every card that he needs at the moment. So we see here Josh, he's attached to the active Muck Muck, which hasn't lost an energy to Crushing Hammer yet. That Guru is up to 6 damage now as Josh passes back over to Lewis. And shuffles his hand. <laughs> Sufficient randomization of the hand there. And Lewis MLs once. MLs a second time. He grabs a recycle energy with that second ML. He really needs to hit a second Guru here. He does have a Pokecon, but I don't think he has a Poke Pokemon 2 communication away at the moment, which is rough. I think he also has Double Catcher in hand. Which will be really strong if Josh does ma make that mistake of uh, of attaching a, a spell tag to a Malamar again. Those Poke Gears, he grabs the Elm. So you see, the Poke Gear is enough to get those cards from the bottom of his deck shuffled into his deck at the moment. So then he's a chance of grabbing those Acrobikes again. And he's going to use the Elm to grab. It's probably just a thin at this point, honestly. He'll grab a Pidgeotto if it's there. He's got another Pidgey, which makes me confused. I reckon he just grabbed the Pidgeotto the first time around to for a bit of consistency to dig through his deck. And now he grabs the other Pidgey, the Ditto, 
and the Mew. At this point, he probably doesn't even bench the Ditto. He just benches the Pidgey, I reckon. And keeps the other two in hand. He can also communication away that Mew for the Oranguru, which is exactly what he's doing right now. Mew goes into the deck. He gets another Oranguru that he can switch into eventually. Or that he can use once uh, this Muck takes a knockout on the active Oranguru. Now the problem for Josh is that if he does get a knockout on this active Oranguru, that puts him ahead on prizes, which means that uh, Lewis's Lieutenant Surge is active, which means that Lewis can just establish that lock so much easier by getting down the hand size using two Jesse James per turn or two Miles per turn. It also leaves him susceptible to a lesser reset stamp, so the reset stamp will go to five instead of... And that was a heads. There you go. So he does get a resource management off through the confusion, takes the 10 damage from poison, and he shuffles back in. It was a Jesse James, a Mars, and I think an Acrobike or a Poker Gear. But I didn't see it, so there you go. Josh Lilies for three. He gets the spell tag on the Inke, which is fine as long as he doesn't evolve it. If he evolves it, it could provide an issue because Lewis could capture up that Inke, which would then be a Malamar. And then just trap it in the active. And as you see, Josh takes that prize. So he does go um, up to the five, uh, down to five prizes. But, sorry, I'm just changing the, the game score. So this is actually up. He does go up to five, uh, down to five prizes. But as I said, it does put Lieutenant Surge active. And Lewis does seem to have a pretty thin deck at the moment. He's got that Recycle Energy in hand. He probably needs to try and hit an Oranguru again somehow. He chooses not to grab the Cynthia he found off that Poker Gear. And just leave it in the deck. Probably wanting to discard it off an Acrobike somehow, but uh, that's very, very niche. Lewis has his discard uh, pile spread out along the mat as well and that will uh, get big very quickly at this rate so there you go he jesse james is once he do obviously doesn't have the surge he did get rid of one earlier but he picked it up again um or using a resource management at some point there you go so he, he gets rid of a uh, professor elms and tate and liza with the jesse james Tate and Liza could be a big loss here because uh, Josh can poison that or, uh, that active Oranguru um, and do the 80 damage poison. As Lewis uh, resource manages back a Jesse James, the Tate and Liza, and an Oranguru. So now we're back to Josh's turn. Now Josh's hand size is uh, severely depleted at the moment, thanks to Lewis's Jesse and James. Uh, he does still have four cards active to, and one of them. It's a lily, so he's like, oh, okay, Lewis, you get rid of whatever you want, you know. He just takes a knockout on that Oranguru. The re recycle energy should go back to hand, as Lewis has now worked out, and the Oranguru goes into the deck. And Lewis is left with a Pidgey, two and two Pidgeotto, and that's it, and Josh is down to four prizes. This is where this Pidgeotto deck can go badly, is that Lewis might not be able to set up um, in time and Josh can just start taking knockouts. And as you've seen, Josh has had four turns to manually attach each turn. He's two prizes ahead already. He just needs to get those last four prizes before Lewis locks him out of this. But Lewis does need a, a fair bit to lock him out of this. Lewis is gonna poke you. He's probably hoping he has Surge here. Doesn't, he hits a Jesse James. So. He really needs to start hitting some crushing hammers here, Lewis. The problem is that that Muck Muck just has so many energy, and Josh could even attach more energy to it so that even if Lewis does start hitting his crushing hammers, Josh can still attack through it. Josh hasn't used the GX attack yet. There you go, there's no attachment, and he just passes straight back to Josh.
There you go. So Josh has got this. He's, he's starting to just attach the active. He's worked out the play. He's attached to the active. He's knocked out the Pidgey. So now even if there's a crushing hammer, Josh will still be able to to attack with that muck mark. Lewis only has two airmails on board. He doesn't have an Oranguru yet. He gets rid of a Pokecom, which is interesting because I would have thought that that could get him into the Oranguru, but there you go. He, he acrobats into it anyway. So he'll be able to bench that Oranguru to resource bench. The problem is he's lost his Pidgeys. This deck doesn't function as well without all four airmails, obviously. Like being able to see eight cards as opposed to four cards a turn. That's a fun function a lot better. So he probably needs to start Marsing here to draw into those extra cards. Just so that he can establish this lock. Getting rid of Josh's hand size with a reset stamp and then chip chipping so that he can't draw into anything else. It looks like Lewis is eyeing up this double custom catcher and then a reset stamp. Uh, not a reset stamp. Double custom catcher and then a crushing hammer. So he'd probably, probably custom catcher up the Malmar, I reckon, just so it can't retreat out. No, he's passed. He's saving it for next turn. He's happy to lose this Pidgey. Get Josh down to two. There you go. That's six energy on that Mark Mark. And Lewis promotes the Ditto. Oh, it looks like Lewis is throwing away the Ditto just to establish this lock with one. Lewis doesn't want to lose that Oranguru next turn. He's obviously not planning on uh, capturing around using Custom Catcher to, to get around uh, this Muck Mark at all. He's really got to hope that uh, Josh just doesn't ever hit switch, I guess. Um, and the Chip Chip should make sure of that. So I think Lewis's plan is for Josh to take this knockout on the Ditto and then to promote the Oranguru and reset stamp jo Josh down to one. And then get rid of that one using a Mars. But it'll be interesting to see if Lewis actually does have that there. There you go. So Josh has taken that prize. He's gone down to one. Now here's Lewis's turn. He's promoted that Oranguru. Okay. That Oranguru is now asleep, apparently. We'll see what he's got. I think I saw a reset stamp there. They do look very similar to Crushing Hammers. No, it's definitely there. So he cut, custom catches the Malamar. Those, all those energies go down to, to Josh's bench. And he plays a reset stamp, which lowers Josh's hand size to one. Now the problem Lewis will have is he can get a lock this turn, but can he get a lock next turn? It's easy for him to get, get the lock this turn, but the problem is that th those cards will go to the bottom of his deck. He, he will shuffle back in the Chip Chip and probably a couple of Crushing Hammers as well. And that will go to the bottom of his deck and he needs to hit the Chip Chip again. He gets he draws two with Mars, gets rid of the only card in Josh's hand. Josh is officially down to zero. He Chip Chips. He's got three cards. Looks like a Malamar, a Treasure... And I think an energy? I didn't see which one he chose, but he, he can pretty much give Josh any of those. He probably wouldn't choose the energy. I reckon he probably choose the treasure. Yeah, so the problem is he'll, he'll resource manage back the chip chip ice axe, and then... Oh, it looks like the custom catches he's going for. Oh, that Ditto hitting the Lost Zone, which uh, it should have last turn. When it was knocked out. Yeah, he grabs the Chip Chip and a Reset Stamp. Okay, interesting calls by Lewis there. He doesn't have any Crushing Hammers in his discard. He's saving him for the Malamar at the moment, I think. So He's saving them in case the Malamar gets an energy attached. If he misses the lock so that he can just chip chip, but at this moment all Josh needs is a switch, so Lewis needs to deny him the switch to the point where to the point where um, he can hit six 
crushing him <laughs> to get rid of all the energy on that Mugfire. So Lewis needs to deny him a fair bit here. As you can see, the Power Pad puts two supporters back in. I think they were both Mars. It might have been one Jesse James, one Mars. And now he can air mail and hopefully hit that chip chip. He, no, that was a crushing hammer, I think, not a chip chip. So that's a good thing about cards like Power Pad is that they do let him shuffle that deck so he can get those cards from the bottom of his deck. He's just working out how many cards he has in hand. It's 12, 15, 16 cards in hand at the moment. Nowhere near an unknown hand, but I, I don't think he plays it anyway, so. There you go, there's one crushing hammer. I think he's decided that he just needs to go for it, but he's hit tails on it anyway, so. He knows that if Josh hits a switch, he's lost this. Like, he's absolutely, that's it. Josh has not slammed down that switch, so I assume that means that he's drawn and passed. <clears throat> Having a look through his discard, pass it back to Lewis. Lewis top decks a Mew, which isn't handy. A reset stamp, and then a Mars. So he can reset stamp, and then Mars, Josh back down to zero. Um, <clears throat> the issue would be, there you go, he does reset stamp, and he can march Josh back down to zero. The issue would be he needs to draw the chip chip ice axe off, uh, off the Mars. Otherwise, he doesn't have control of Josh's top deck, um, and it could it could just be a switch. Josh draws his one card, picks up all the the cards on his deck. Oh, he did hit the switch. There you go. So Lewis has actually gotten rid of Josh's switch, and from the looks at the last game, that was his only switch. So Josh got very excited. He was like, oh, I've top decked the one card that will get me out of this, the only card. And now he needs two. Now he, ne now he needs two. And Lewis has pretty much established the lock. The only way Josh can get out of this active is by attaching two energy at once. And he just doesn't have a way to do it. And that's where... <clears throat> it was all well and good for Josh to keep attaching those energies to the active Machma. Just so that if there were crushing hammers hit, he could keep on attacking, essentially. But now, he's ruining the, the fact that he didn't attach one to that Malma. So if he had attached one to the Malma, Lewis hasn't hit heads on any crushing hammers yet. So if he had attached one to that Malma, he'd be able to retreat it really easily. Leaving a bunch of one retreat cost attackers uh, on his bench for Lewis to to custom catch her up which would have made it much easier for him to retreat out but now there's Malamar stuck in the active with two two energy retreat costs and that Mark Mark stuck on the bench with six energy on it those power pads back on Mars and a Jesse James <coughs> and now Lewis is getting thin and even with two Pidgeotto it seems that he still establishes lock Now it's important to note that Lewis doesn't have control of Josh's top deck at the moment. He has not chip chip this turn. So he doesn't have control of that yet, but he does have his two air mounts, which he's using now. It seems that he's hit a reset stamp. And I don't think much else. So he can reset <laughs> set stamp Josh to one again. But he really wanted a Mars that turn to get rid of Josh's hand and draw an extra two and hopefully draw into that chip chip. Slowly but surely this deck is getting thinner. But unfortunately Lewis can't get that lock just at the moment. And Josh's deck is still so, like it has so many cards in it right now. Looks like Josh either hits a switch or gets a double energy attachment. Or this game's going to time because... <coughs> That deck is going to take a long time to get through. A draw pass from Josh there. And we're back to Lewis. For some reason this game feels uh, very one-sided, like only one person is doing a lot.
Lewis's hand is uh, currently about twice the size of his deck. He has a surge. He has the chip chip. He probably wants to surge to play a Jesse James or two Mars. Two Mars would be a lot better because it helps him dig through his deck. There you go. Look at that. So he plays a Mars and another Mars and that gets rid of Josh's whole hand. His deck is down to about five cards by the look of it. And now Lewis should start establishing this lock. And Josh is pretty much in scoop protocol at the moment because uh, Lewis has everything he needs. And there's just no way that he's going to be able to switch out of this. All Lewis needs to do is start hitting heads on those crushing hammers. Which in about two turns by my judgment, he should be able to do it. <laughs> that is a, a shuffle of somebody who is very sad at the moment by Josh there. Yeah. <laughs> does not look happy to be be in this position and why would you? you you don't even get to play the game at the moment honestly it's just it's just sitting there i assume that lewis's brox grit is a uh, in his prizes because otherwise um he should be probably using it to to get back some pidgeys so that he can evolve them that was a tails on that crushing hammer that was a heads on that one and he gets rid of one energy so this is what he's going to start doing Lewis is going to start using these crushing hammers, probably two at a time and a chip chip ice axe to control the top deck. And then he's just gonna let Josh have cards, essentially. So he's going to wanna, your luck essentially is one turn you wanna reset stamp and get rid of those cards while chip chipping. And then the next turn you wanna crushing hammer away energy. <coughs> and essentially the only way that Lewis wins, is uh, that Josh wins, is if he chip chips Josh into uh, if Lewis chip chips Josh into three switch cards that's the only way and it needs to happen before Lewis gets rid of all those energy on the mark because if those energy are gone Josh just needs too much to win so he does still have a win coming but it's, it's very unlikely at this stage because Lewis has control of his top deck so as long as Lewis doesn't give him a switch it's over Like that, that's it that's a game there I mean, it's still going to take another 20 minutes to get through, <laughs> but but that's it. Like, that's the end of it. The problem here, as uh, as a caster at the moment, is uh, just looking at Josh's deck, seeing how how many cards are left in that, and knowing we have to go through that many more turns to finish this game, unless Josh extends ahead, <laughs> essentially. If he was on more prizes, Lewis could always reset stamp him back, which he might do anyway. There you go. Because Lewis knows he didn't chip chip last turn, so he, he knows that Josh could be getting cards here that he didn't choose. And then he masters it away. It was an energy spinner, so it wouldn't have helped him. But that's okay. And we see Giratina, energy, and something else, but Lewis has chosen the Giratina. Which does not help Josh at all. Not even slightly. He resource manages back. The stamp, the chip chip, and the power pad. Josh puts that Giratina on top of his deck and then draws that Giratina off the top of his deck. And then passes. <laughs> I assume. Yep. <clears throat> there we go. And we're back to Lewis. Riveting gameplay here. But he's, he's really just nailed this lock. He grabs the power pad, puts whatever else at the bottom. Power pad's back. That's it. So see, your pa power pad back to Mars. And a surge. Okay. All right. Interesting. I would have just gone for the double Mars. I would have got the surge next turn because he doesn't need to play a double support at this turn. But that's okay. Maybe he actually... No. He, he has the second Mars in hand. He didn't use it last turn. So that would be why he went for it surge because he will need that surge eventually if he breaks this lock but he's so close to establishing it perfectly but there we go <clears throat> that's the one the one thing about uh, Jesse and James which makes this better than Mars is that Mars you need to draw the two cards to discard one so you actually need to pick it up off the top deck or pick it up off your your first air mail which is highly probable to to use it, and so you can't use two at once. 
if you have established the perfect lock because you only have three cards in deck and once you use it once that's it you can't use it a second time so that's where jesse and james is better it gets rid of the two cards it does get rid of two cards from your own hand as well obviously but it gets rid of the two cards rather than the one and you don't need to draw the cards to get it <clears throat> so lewis is there there's one card left in deck if lewis can draw this card this turn that's it that's a game and josh has hopefully realized this during the last five, five minutes of this round. Absolutely. There's five more minutes, is there? Yeah. There you go. So Remy's just come in and uh, told me there's going to be five more minutes in this round. It's the only game going. So, as we expected. So we enjoy five more li minutes of this loop. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Everybody in this building knows that uh, Lewis has established this loop, except for Josh Tatlow, apparently. Josh. So. <laughs> Lewis has got the loop here. He doesn't have... He hasn't used crushing hammers. He did hit a heads on one a little while ago, but there you go. See, he psychic recharges back that crushing hammer. So he really needs to hit two in one turn. I think Lewis has worked out that it's not it's not going to happen. He's uh he's just going to have to catch a back around the muck muck. But I think that as long as Josh hits a switch, he wins it. But Lewis is just going to deny him the switch for as long as possible. And Lewis only has to deny for another five minutes, as we just heard from Remy there. Our, our um, head judge today he only has to die on it for another five minutes so if josh has another switch in there he's going to be hoping it comes to the top sometime soon lewis's hand size is huge he's literally got half his deck in his hand at the moment he's power padding for double mars so this is what i was saying before he's got four cards in deck right he's going to draw with airmail and he would grab a Mars, and then he has to either air mount, if he can only use the one Mars because he can't draw cards for the second Mars. But it doesn't matter because he does have this lock down to one. So Josh's mistake was actually going down to one prize card. Sounds funny. Sounds funny that Josh's mistake was him winning the game, essentially. But he couldn't quite get the win in time, and now Lewis just has him sorted. So Lewis Marses, no, he airmails first and then grabs a Mars, plays a Mars, grabs his last two cards in deck. That Giratina hits the discard, which is funny because uh, Josh was just reset stamped out of that Giratina into the Giratina again. Lewis put something, it was a very quick decision, so clearly that was not a switch. Um, Lewis chucks that on top of his deck, whatever it was, I don't even know. It looked maybe a Viridian Forest, I think it might have been. Which is interesting because it does <laughs> give Josh something playable, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really help Josh at all. And then he puts back in the stamp, the chip chip, and the Mars. Yeah, he doesn't really bother shuffling, but he still should because it does actually matter where he draws the Mars, but he can see it no matter what anyway, so he just top decks the Mars. uses both airmails so he doesn't even bother using the Mars I think he's just going to Jesse James here Lewis is actually shuffling his hand that is, he's just shuffling at the moment hopefully he doesn't Mars here because I don't know if he realizes that he can't do that hold on, I might stop the stream here give me one second There you go. So he has power padded back the elms and then drawn them both with Mars and then discarded that mysterious treasure from Josh's hand. I just had to let him know that he couldn't Mars without cards in his deck. So it's draw two cards and then discard a card from your opponent's hand and you complete that action to the furthermost point of the action that you can. So if you can't draw the two cards, that means you can't 
discard the card from your opponent's hand. So It's good that he realizes that now, and it's good that it was very reversible. It's lucky we picked up on it quickly. So there you go. He gets the Mars, the chip chip, and the stamp back in. You've seen this before. You've seen it happen. He doesn't even need to shuffle because he sees his whole, whole deck next to him. He'll see that Mars no matter what, and he'll be able to use it while drawing cards. So he'll ML once, he'll grab the Mars, and then he'll use that Mars. So he resets stamps to one. You see that he's getting rid of an extra card each turn. Because Josh it's, is put to zero using the Mars, and then reset stamp to one. So there we go. He's worked out this lock. And he chip chips. And with that chip chip, it looks like there is a switch in that one. There is. It's a switch, an energy, which he's giving him. And a Viridian. Interesting play, because uh, the Viridian probably would have been the one to go for there, I reckon. Because uh, Josh would have no cards in his hand to actually discard. But he's given him the energy, which means that Lewis will need to hit a Crushing Hammerhead's next turn. Um, I mean, not totally out of the question, as he does have three Crushing Hammers in his hand at the moment. Um, but yeah, Josh will be able to attach to the active. And then if Lewis has to give up another energy, that, that's a game there for Josh. But we'll see. You would assume that, like, odds are that Lewis hits a head on one of his three crushing hammers at the moment. But I think Lewis is just working out. I think, I think Lewis has realized that he probably shouldn't have given the energy there. He's just trying to work out whether he does something different now. Ah, Cynthia switch energy. That makes it a lot worse. For sure. Thank you, Evil Sneasel. Um, yeah, that and and your cat, obviously. Um, that makes it a lot tougher that decision because you're not giving Josh six cards. So yeah, Lewis is working this out now. Probably needs to make an action, honestly. Um, he is taking a long time. He's getting his crushing hammers back. He knows that he's done. He's given them. So he's broken this loop, and this is what I mean. This is how Josh wins this game. He gets a chip chip. There is cards like that, They're where Lewis has to make a decision, and then he forces Lewis into breaking that loop for a turn. So Lewis is going to have to Crushing Hammer this turn to get rid of that Malmar, and he's only got two shots at it. So two tails and a failed Chip Chip could definitely spell trouble for Lewis. So Josh, exactly, attaches, passes, here we go, Chip Chip for three. This is important. What does he have? The switch is definitely in there. Switch is there. I can't tell what the other two cards are. The switch is uh, the card furthest away from the camera. I don't know what he picked. I guess we'll see next turn. But it could be rough for Lewis. There you go. Okay. So this is what I was talking about with the pace of play is that Lewis gets this loop down so quickly, but as soon as this loop breaks with a with a chip chip that, that fails essentially. Um it, it makes it a lot rougher for Lewis. So he's going to need to hit these Crushing Hammer heads. I don't know if he realizes that he hasn't air mailed yet. He's not going to go for it. He's just going to catch her up. He grabbed those catches about 12 turns ago. He grabbed them out the turn that he um, catch it up the Malamar. And he's, he's used it to bring up the, the Gengar Mimikyu, which Josh benched, unfortunately. Josh has got his fingers crossed. Look at him. He's crossing his fingers, praying for this switch right now. He's, praying, he's crossing every finger that he possibly can praying for this switch right now. Lewis has obviously given him a card that he didn't want to get in the first, uh, didn't want to give him in the first place because Lewis took a long time to decide on that chip chip. He's taken a long time to work out what he wants to do here too. There we go. I'd say we're in time. That would be why. So this is uh, by the judging of the hand movements there and how long Lewis is actually taking to make his turn. Um, I'd say we're in time because it means, means that Lewis doesn't need to rush anything at the moment. Now, that's a way that Josh could definitely win is that he could Poltergeist GX here, which means that Lewis can't play a card from his hand, meaning that Lewis can't establish this lock at the moment. There you go. And Lewis is going to hit this clear vision. So that is the, the way that this deck 
does things better than the other deck. He's hit this clear vision, which means that, that Josh can't poltergeist. Josh has gotten a Cynthia. Lewis gave Josh a Cynthia, so the other cards must have been two switch. Because um that's it. Like Josh is gonna draw six cards from this. And if he draws a switch out of this, I think. No, he doesn't win anyway. He needs to draw a switch and two catcher. <laughs> Otherwise, he's in trouble. He hits the switch. That's game. That's game. Josh wins. Josh wins off the switch. There you go. <laughs> he takes it in time, and it's a tie. Lewis couldn't establish that lock for one more turn, and it cost him. It cost him. And that's what I mean with this deck. It's so good once you get set up and you're locking it. But as soon as, uh, as, soon as Josh... Um, can break that lock with having three cards of chip chip that he, he wants to have. Um, that That's it for Lewis. So Lewis did well establishing that lock, but he didn't get rid of the energy because he couldn't. The Malamar would bring it back. So it meant that Josh always had an attacker on the bench ready to go. And all he needed was a switch to win the game, essentially. So it's pretty crazy. Um, As it was a draw, we don't have a winner's interview. That was definitely the last game, as Remy came in and told me. So we'll call it there for a second and then we'll have another match for you in a few minutes and uh i don't know if i'll be casting it or if lewis will be casting it but i'll, I'll let you know but we'll be back in in a couple of minutes um with another match for you hopefully not pidgeotto again although that was really interesting see you soon
Hey guys, uh, Lewis here, back with round three of the Area 52 League Challenge. Um, we've got, for round three, we've got Luke Mason playing that Pcrum we saw from round one. And we've also got Zach Griggs, which I am unsure what he is piloting. But, alright, I have a pack to open from my prize pack. And, let's see. And nothing, really. I got a Tynamo, Cosmog, Solander, Gibble, Sawaddle, Reverse Hollow of Riolu, Honch Crow, uh, Lightning Energy, Pukamuku, R Chan, and a Grimsley. Alright. Luck not the greatest, but it's not what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, just check if they're ready. They seem to be shuffling. Gonna Yeah, no, it's a Lewis cast. Lewis cast for once. I, not for once. I, I, I casted yesterday. Just gonna remove a few things. I might give the players the okay to start. Um, transition. Have you got? <laughs> Alright, just give them the okay that yep. they can. No, they have the okay, but I'll give it to them again. <laughs> is this um is this correct? Pro programs though. Alright, we're good. Yes, yeah, so Zach on the left and Luke's on the right. Seem to be Seems Luke won the coin flip, and I didn't hear whether he wanted to go first or second. Pro most likely first. Let's see what... I see a water energy from Zach. I have no clue what he's pi piloting here. Guess we'll see in a sec. Players have shaken hands and the game has begun. We see a Dedene from Zach with a zero from Luke. Zach going first, in fact. So I think Luke chose to go second. Might want to try and get that turn one full blitz with his trusty peeker on. Still see a few water energies from Zach. Could be piloting that nice little Keldeo variant. Plays a reset stamp. Quite aggro. Might be wanting to lower his hand size down for a potential Lily, or maybe he could be just playing a Dedene. Plays the Cynthia, in fact, so. Obviously thinning with the reset stamp. Still have no clue what Zach's playing. See, so yeah, I see a Cherish Ball and a Mysterious Treasure from Zach's side, so I reckon he's playing that Keldeo Quagnag deck. Discards a Water from the Mysterious Treasure. We'll get a better idea of what he's playing with this deck search. I see a Coco Prism, in fact. And a Dratini, is that? He could be playing that Dragonite um, Slowpoke deck, in fact with the Dragonite in there. And he passes it over to Luke. Let's see what Luke can do. See a Lily in Luke's hand. Puts Cynthia to the front. Plays the Calm. Shuffling into Dedene. Might want to grab that Coco Prism so it's less that's a lot easier to gra grab in the other turns. Grabs that Pcrom actually. Let's see what he do does with this. Attaches a lightning to her. And then plays that Cynthia, yeah.
still don't know exactly what Zach's playing. I don't think Luke would as well. Luke drawing that. Six new cards. See an electro power from his hand. And just seems to pass it over to Zack. Zack attaches a lightning energy to his Dratini, I think it is. Can't exactly see, but it looks to be a Dratini. And then plays that Lily, drawing three cards. Seeing a triple acceleration and a water energy. So, obviously Zack's playing something very, very spicy indeed. Evolves to the Dragonette and then just passes it over to Luke. Plays that Cherish Ball. Might want to grab a Dedene with that. Yeah, puts the Dedene. Yep, grabs Dedene. See what he does with that Dedene. Whether he plays that just straight up. Draw that six new cards. Or if he has anything that he can do before that. Attaches energy to the Pikram. Plays an Electro Power. Puts it to the side, probably, to indicate that Electro Power's been played this turn. And then just plays that Dedene, drawing six new cards. Play, plays the Raichu alone, and Raichu down. Going through his discard, just checking a few things. Plays that Volkner. What's he going to grab with this Volkner here? Stadium Nav and that Lightning Energy. Alright. All right. So I think he's going for the Thunder Mountain here to try and get that full blitz off. If I would not be mistaken. Yes. Plays that Stadium Nerve. Flips. One heads it seems. I saw a five and didn't see the other number. Grabs a Thunder Mountain and instantly instantly puts it into play. Has an E-switch in hand. What are we going to see Luke doing with this E-switch? Just passes it over to Zach. Alright. Zach grabs a Dragonite GX. Dragonite GX, for those who don't know does 270 damage for five energies and then you have to discard three and i don't know what the first attack is but the gx attack is quite nice does for one energy um discard as many cards as you like from your hand till you have nine or less then you get to draw till 10 so works quite well with in that mewtwo new box sort of deck but people have decided that the attack isn't as good as the Macago, maybe. Or the Charizard, new Charizard GX from Hidden Fates. Plays the Thunder Mountain. What's that? Pikachu Zekrom into the active. Plays an Electro Power, and I think we're going to see a full blitz for a knockout here. Accelerating some energy, maybe onto the Alolan Raichu Raichu GX. Yep, 
Let's turn that to the side to indicate that it's been played this turn. Plays an energy switch onto the Alolan Raichu Raichu. Then plays a Cynthia. Alright. See what Luke can do with these fresh new six cards. I think what he's gonna do is just draw those six cards and then just use full blitz. Uh, might wanna accelerate the energies onto the Choo Choo so he can potentially use its GX attack, which for those who don't know, I think it's for three energy, three lightning. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. <laughs> um, does 150 and then if it has three more attached to it, does plus 100 and switch. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. <laughs> comes the... Alright, comes the Pika on to get the Tapu Koko Prism Star. I think he... Yep, uses that uses the Dance of the Ancients to accelerate two lightning energy from his discard to two of his Pokemon. Yeah, then we see the full blitz from the knockout. And let's see what he accelerates the energy to. Yeah, and does it in fact accelerate the energy onto the Raichu, Alolan Raichu? Plays a Judge Whistle, Zach does, to draw that one card. See what he can do with this active Dragonite. That's just a triple acceleration energy, and I think we'll see a. Um, I actually don't know what the attack is of that, but he does do the knockout for 270. And discards that triple acceleration energy with the effect of the card taking a knockout. All Luke needs, it. yeah, the ele all Luke needs is that electro power and uh, uses that lightning ride GX for the game, taking game one quite convincingly, convincingly for Luke. Update this. It is, Luke is one game up against Zach Griggs. Uh, probably not pronounce that right, but anyway. I feel like what Zach's deck is trying to do is try and set up that Dragonite GX as quickly as possible with two energies and then attaching that triple acceleration energy to take a big knockout on these tag teams Pokemon and I feel like he also plays the other Dragonite which I think it accelerates a water and lightning energy to your Pokemon I'll just look that one up real quick one sec Yeah, so what the Dragonite does is once during your turn before you once during your turn before you attack, you may attach a water energy card and lightning energy card to one of your, one of each or one of each from your hand to one of your to your Pokemon in any way you like. So I th I think what Zach's deck is trying to achieve here is getting that those two energies on the Dragonite and the triple acceleration energy for the Attachments for turn. 
so he can get that 270 knock knockout on practically everything in the format. Alright, two players setting up for game two. Luke having that Tapu Koko Prism Star as the starter. And we see a mulligan from Zach. Another mulligan from Zach. Do see Zach getting that basic Pokemon, so only two mulligans from Zach. Alright, game two has started. Do see that Latios. Prism Star start. Let me look what this does real quick. I have Latios Prism Star. Alright. So, does 50 times the. This does 50 damage for each of your Evolution Dragon Pokemon in play. So, but that could potentially do max 250 on a non GX Pokemon. A little hard to do, but it's not unachievable. See Zach do. Zach just plays a few cards. Didn't exactly see what he played. Looking up the Latios Prism Star. And he just passes over to Luke. Luke attaches that ex a skateboard onto the Tapu Koko Prism. Looks to have two custom catches in hand. Plays that Electro Power. And just a Dene's, yeah. Two custom catches, a lightning energy, and a few other cards I did not see. Luke plays the Zeraora and the Alolan Raichu Raichu GX. Has a Volkner. He's thinking whether or not he wants to play that. Plays the Volkner, yep. Wonder what he's going to gri grab. He might want to um, potentially grab um, an electromagnetic radar, potentially, or an energy switch, because he could maybe um, retreat into the Zeraora, get an extra lightning energy into the discard with the electromagnetic radar, and then use that to Tapu Koko Prism Star. I don't know. Grabs that stadium nav. Obviously looking for that Thunder Mountain. And I'm pretty sure if Luke has a, Z a Zapdos in hand and another Electro Power, that could be game. That could be a very quick game too here.
does not look to have it in hand right now. Retreats into that Dedene. If Luke has a switch in hand, that could be game. That could be a, this could be a, a donk here. Guys. Attaches one to the Choo Choo, one to the Zeroa. And if Luke has a switch, plays the Thunder Mountain. Plays the switch, and we see a tandem shock for the knockout for the donk. Very quick game two here. At the Area 52 League Challenge. V very convincing from Luke. Bit unlucky for Zach here. And we see Luke take that round. I, I might quickly go ask Luke if he wants to have an interview. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, we have Luke here, the winner of that feature match. Um, very convincing 2-0. Um, I'll just quickly close the door to lock some sound. Um, so, in game one, we saw, um, Zach not get the greatest setup. Uh, talk me through how you were able to, like, very convincingly won that game one. Well, he got the um started off with the uh one poke the Dedenne and the active which was a free two prize cards, yep. just one electro power. And then with the um Dragonite GX in the on the bench he brought it up after it was knocked out and I just went with yeah. the um lightning ride. And we saw a very, very quick game two with him starting at Latios Prism Star and not being able to get another basic Pokemon with you getting that Tandem shock for the knockout. Um, yeah, very convincing. Yeah, the start of the game was not good. Yeah, the first hand, but the yeah. Morgans, uh saved it, so we're good. I s yeah, I saw you had two custom catches in your starting hand that you had to Dedene away. So if you missed that KO, he could have very easily gotten out of that if he got yeah. what he needed. All right, I'll just leave you guys. Alright, goodbye. If, okay, we've got the mic on now. Alright. So, that match, very convincingly for Luke Mason with his trusty Pikram deck. Uh, that will be all for the Area 52 League Challenge. Um, I don't know if we'll be st streaming in, the, in a few... Uh, we don't actually have any events on for a bit, so we'll have to wait for another stream. Uh, area 52 might potentially come in for a PTCGO stream maybe later in the week since I don't have school on at the moment yeah All right, I'm gonna end the stream guys thanks for watching the league challenge and I'll see you guys when I see you guys <laughs> bye
All right, everybody, we're back. Um, yeah, I had to play that last round, so you might have noticed that uh, Lewis, um, Lewis ended up streaming your match, um, and you had Luke and Zach, I think. And I heard that there was a donk, so <laughs> that's nice to get on stream. We saw one of those yesterday with um, with David donking uh, Jacob Sparks after he opened Lone Blacephalon and then attached past. And then David had the Tapu Fini. Uh, no, it might have been Jamie, actually. I don't even remember. But somebody had the Tapu Fini to uh, take that knockout and win the game straight away from there, which is really unfortunate for Jacob. But, I mean, it's interesting for the stream to watch. It's pretty funny. Um, thank you all so much for watching. It was only three rounds today. Um, uh, I'm glad that we got some seniors and juniors onto the stream. I think they're glad that we got some seniors and juniors onto the stream too. They seem to really enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> I know that Lewis really enjoyed casting as well. Um, so yeah, it was great. It was great all around to involve as many people as we could. Uh, just before we go, uh, special thanks to everybody who came into the stream today, everybody who followed today. Um, we really appreciate it. We're trying to build our brand as a team, uh, as a stream, um, stream crew, essentially. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just the more people who come in, the more people who follow us, the more support we get, the more of this content we put out. And um, hopefully we can start seeing this content being put out Australia wide. The more local tournaments we can see, the better, honestly. Um, also special thanks to uh, my team, uh, Full Bench Gaming. Um, yeah, uh, including and especially Jamie um, McDonald for setting up this whole stream room and uh, getting this sorted so that uh, we could actually stream this cup and bring it to you guys, the cup and the challenge. Um, it was, a really great experience and he puts in so much work so thanks to him thanks to the rest of the team i know that um uh, david won masters today i got second um lewis won seniors i think um actually maybe lewis came third in seniors um yeah and uh i know that our juniors kingsley and naomi and uh our other master um jeremy evans uh are all at a cup in Penrith at the moment, from memory, I think, um, a 49 Masters Cup. So, uh, yeah, the best of luck to, to Jeremy. I haven't been able to check my phone, so I don't know how he's going, but I'm sure he's smashing it as per usual. And uh, also best of luck to the young gods, uh, Naomi and Kingsley. Uh, hopefully they're over there killing it as well. Uh, lastly, uh, shout outs to our two major sponsors, um, Area 52, obviously, for hosting this League Cup. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, they're so supportive of everything we do. They've given us this room to stream in and bring this broadcast to you. Uh, they host tournaments really well. It's always on time and just well judged and and well uh, organized, essentially. Um, yeah, and they, they just do so much for us. And also, special thanks to uh, our card um, seller, No Josh Collectibles. Um, go check him out if uh, you're in the need for some cards that are in stand uh, at the moment. Uh, it's collectibles.nojosh.com.au. Um, he, he's got everything essentially and if he doesn't message him he probably has it sitting around he just hasn't put it up yet he's really good he's some of the best prices i've ever seen from a, a reseller in tasmania um uh, in tasmania in australia um yeah so he's keeps a constant uh, conversion rate rather than going up and down with the u.s economy so um i think it's 1.31 or 1.38 um that he uses so it's always at that low point um and also uh, every week uh, he'll announce that he's going to change the prices as per Troll and Toad um, and uh, he'll announce that about a day before so you have a chance to pick up anything that you know has gone up or any uh, wait for anything that you know has gone down um, before the prices change themselves so uh, yeah he's great check them all out if you're ever down in Tassie check out Area 52 um, and if you're uh, in the need of cards check out No Josh um, they've all got Facebooks our team's got a Facebook page our team um, Full Bench Gaming also has a Twitter, uh, Twitch, obviously, you're here. Uh, YouTube as well, check it out. Some of these matches will be going up on YouTube, I hope. Um, so once Jamie gets his computer going, he'll edit those. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Uh, thank you so much for sh tuning in. Hopefully, we can get some PTCGO streams going. Um, fingers crossed I can get in at some point this week, maybe tomorrow, um, sometime soon anyway, to uh, stream some PTCGO with you all. Ho I hope you all drop in and... Have a bit of fun with me. Um, yeah, I know that Jamie's planning on doing that too. And I know that Lewis is keen to get as much streaming in as possible. So, uh, yeah, uh, until then, uh, I'll see you next time. And thank you so much for coming to watch.